Get the f*** out of here! <laughs> Go home! We don't want you here. We don't like your kind here. We only like people in blue cars around here. One more. Don't honk at me. <laughs> don't honk at me, asshole. <laughs> the gate is open. Time to go through. Are you ready for what's on the other side? No. Nope. Oh, God dang it. We have cats in this house. Speaking of, I heard one jingling. I hear, I hear one back there. Maybe, maybe they will uh, bless us with their presence here, uh, here sooner rather than later. But kitties. At least two of them, Bilbo and uh, Vega. They're not gonna come when you call them. Nah. Kitty show usually up. will at least come investigate that sound. <laughs> but he may not actually let me get him on. Instead, we got an Asher. Hey, Asher. I'm a cat. <laughs> He's like, I'm as big as a cat. No, you are much bigger. There he is. Yeah, you can barely see him. Yeah, you see his Boop. snout. Booping the snoots. You're so handsome. Uh, look at Ashy. Ashy boy. Oh, oh big yawn. Big yawn. Big yawn and boy. Did you uh. go potty? I think he did. Did you go potty? I hope so. If not, that'd be awkward. It's kind of dark outside, so it's hard for me to tell. But hmm. He went and did something and then came back to the door. So. It was dark out there, bud? Yeah. All right. I quit seeing shit off you. <clears throat> well, it comes with the territory. But we we have cats in this house, and they get away with a lot of shenanigans. So much to the point where, yeah, they kind of do have plot armor. They yeah, they literally knocked yesterday. the pizza box off the damn counter upstairs, and we thought somebody was breaking in the house. Yes. That, yeah, that literally happened. Like, we were all sitting here, and we all noticed the sound, and then you both were just like, y'all hear that? You and know the biscuits and gravy that you made? Yeah. And the two biscuits that were still left over in the microwave? Yeah. Yeah, apparently Kathan took them out and set them on the counter. And they that got motherfucker. Again, dude. Well, you're the one that came and told me about it. No, that was cornbread. It wasn't cornbread, it was biscuits, I'm pretty sure. I was trying to think what would have been in the Or no, was that in the tray, you mean? The the big like tray? I don't I didn't see what it was. No, she it was, just said no, she it assumed was something. the cornbread stuff. Was there cornbread stuff? Did you make cornbread? No, I made a cake. Okay, well it cake. was cake. Oh. Vega ate cake. Vega because ate my cake. cats were up. Oh for God's sakes. Look And so I had to dump it. So that's I thought someone ate it. No. Someone did eat it. The cat ate it. <laughs> Someone, okay. Someone fat and fuzzy ate it. <laughs> you little bastard, I see you over there. He just crawled up under the bed because I think he knew we were talking about him. <laughs> but I just hate that, okay, I had that in there, and I was like, I, I was like spacing it out when I was eating it. Dude, look, you know, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to like take his stuff and leave it out on the counter, like out of the fridge, see what he says. I'd, I'd rather you not, because my cat doesn't need to be eating it. But uh, fair enough, fine. If you decide that's fine. necessary, I guess. But Let's make sure it's something that will upset his tummy too but much. But look, I, I, uh, I mean, I get being absent-minded. There's being absent-minded, and then there's just being negligent. I, I. It's just the fact that it's an inconvenience. He left something in the microwave in his way, so he's going to take it out and not put it back in there. Yeah. And I'm just like, and it's like, how improper is that? He leaves something in there, and then all of a sudden, I leave it out, and then all of a sudden, I guarantee you he'll be pissed yeah, off about it. That's the thing is that you're courteous enough to put the damn thing back in the microwave after you get done with it. Oh uh, well. He's like, I was only out. I was only in the bathroom for a minute. Well, it only takes a takes, minute it, for the damn cat. I was going to say it takes two seconds, man. Two <laughs> seconds for the... even while I'm cooking. They will hop up on the counter and they will try and get a bite. He almost did a really big fucky wucky one time because I, instead of putting them in the tub, like I left them sitting on top of the tub because I was like, well, it'll be fine because the cats don't, they're not allowed in the laundry room, you know? So I left the hairball treats, the Medicaid treats, that particularly has a warning on the back that you're going to have to call if they overdose on those kind of treats. 
Mm-hmm. I left them sitting on top of the tub. And then I come out, see the laundry room door cracked, and Vega dragging that bag trying to get into it. And I'm like, son of a bitch. And so I started keeping them in the tub because Kate what? left the laundry room door open. Look, having cats is is fun. Having but, dogs is fun. There's a dog on the screen, too. Yeah, I see it. But the name of the video is The Insane Plot Armor of Cats. True. So, well, either Vega way... I did have plot armor with that because I managed to catch him before he gnawed down on a bunch of medicated treats. Yeah, that would have been bad. Anywho. Also, I managed to catch him, or him or Bilbo, before they opened the entire bag <laughs> of dog food. Oh, that's right. In the damn floor. Yeah. That would have been bad. So mad. That would have been very, very bad. And Nate had to help me duct tape it. Yeah, that was that was something. Anyway, yeah, so Vega is a master thief, and he will take any opportunity. Well, Bilbo is just a, uh, you know. They're both they're both they, mischievous. They both love. Uh, Bilbo bread. actually stole the catnip that was hiding at the top of my closet, and then it took me a couple more times to get him to stop fucking trying to climb my closet. Climbed your yeah, he climbed to the very top of it and got the catnip bag. I took the catnip bag out and then I found him in my closet again, knocking my pot figures into the fucking litter box. So I had to fucking disinfect pot figures and yell at him. He's like, no, Papa! You can't do that! <laughs> well, once again, cats proving that they. <laughs> I'll tell they you. go with the shelf the other night. <laughs> Oh yeah! So we got a little scared the absolute shit out of specifically me. Specifically for cats, a little fuzzy shelf that Nate got it's for like me. This it was big. stuck right above my desk, you and, know. And Vega's like this big. And he decided to jump up on it the other night, and it fucking came off the wall with him sitting in it. And the screws smashed are still down on my desk and like splattered me with monster because it landed on a monster can. And it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me too. I was yeah. like. Yeah, and I went in there and I looked and, like, the shitty quality of the wood is why it fell apart. So, Mm -hmm. if we ever buy another thing like that, I'm making sure it has, like, a steel bracer throughout the thing so it doesn't do that again. Speaking of... the shitty quality of the wood or the chunky quality of the cat? Speaking of... (laughs) Either way. The shelves in my room need to be reinforced because I attempted to do it myself. Come here, buddy. And I was able to, but it's like... They're coming out of the wall. Here's the chunky lad. There's the Vega. Yes. Speaking, he shall appear. Wee. Look how big he is. He's very long. <laughs> and very thick. And very furry. Yes. Look at him. Aww. <laughs> fur just like yeah. went <laughs> poof. <laughs> as soon as you say it. Well... Let's go over uh, the insane plot armor that nice cats be. have. <laughs> Speaking of, there's the other cat. You know, right when we're about to start the video, they're like, hey, are y'all talking about us? missing the Calliope. I think she's still upstairs in your room, right? Well, she has the opportunity to come down here. She's just, she was snuggling in the blanket, so she's not so, moving, probably. Yeah. Hey, she found a warm spot, Bilbo. so she's fine. Bilbo. Snuggling in blanket. I wonder who she takes Come after. Oh, <laughs> Bilbo. Wanted to pet you, buddy. He has disappeared. Yes. Well, you can still see him a little bit back there. He's like right there. Yeah, I know. And he's... he is... He's gone. <laughs> it's a little shadow moving across the background. Yes. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Plot Armor of Cats by uh, Casual Geographic. Let's check it out. I swear, <laughs> look at that dog and tell me that it does not like look shorty. like shorty and Asher. Yeah, more more shorty because of the ears. Yeah. Oh my god! What in the... But look at the chest pattern. That <laughs> is. Oh, that is Asher's chest pattern. <laughs> Mama, come get out! Oh Lord! Oh Lord! Oh Lord! Grab the girl hand! Oh Lord! You are gone! Oh! You oh, <laughs> out of nowhere! <laughs> term used to describe a character so overpowered that they make the game stop functioning as intended and exploit the game's balance in their favor. <laughs> well, if cats aren't the most broken animals on the planet, God must have discontinued first place. Talk a lot about animals. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, like the same face that cat was yeah, making. <clears throat> By evolution. In fact, my most popular video today was about 10 of them. Well, if I ever do a video on nature's favorites, cats would surely be at the very top. Cats are arguably the most successful predators we've ever seen. With so many overpowered <laughs> abilities, you'd swear it was plot armor. Yes. I don't even want to make this intro too long, so here's 10 superpowers your cat has. <laughs> Just slap the seal. As that you may or may not have known. And number one, zero fall damage. You've probably heard that cats always land on their feet, but the real flex is being able to fall from heights that would have any human furnishing a coffin. A 1987 study showed that out of 132 cats that were brought to an emergency vet in New York City after falling out of a high rise, 90% lived and less than 40% required life saving treatment. It gets even wilder when you realize that cats actually have a better chance of getting airdrop from a building and walking it off the higher the drop was. And it's all because wow. cats understand physics. You see, when you're in free fall, you accelerate towards the ground until you reach terminal velocity, where you literally can't fall any faster. When cats reach TV, they splay their legs and kind of just parachute the rest of the way down. And instead of landing on their feet, they break their fall with their chest and abdomen. Obviously, they don't completely tank the hit, but thanks to their relatively large surface area to weight ratio, they maximize the points of contact that smack the ground and therefore minimize the damage. And since cats apparently wow. have lifelong beef with gravity, cats that reach terminal velocity instinctively know not to tense up, but instead relax and basically turn themselves into a kite on the way down. The thing is, if they don't have time to reach terminal velocity, they end up getting hurt way worse. So like in a weird twist, cats that fall from two to seven stories actually end up more down bad than the ones that touch earth from 10 stories up. In fact, cats have about a 95% chance of falling from 10 stories and living. Meanwhile, the average human has a 95% chance of getting outlined with chalk. So oh, no, I guess it's okay if Calliope jumps off the top of the cat. I'm gonna tell y'all something. <laughs> this happened at my house, the, uh, the the mansion, the previous house we lived in. Lulu was in my room. Yeah, I remember that. That scared the shit out of me. Yeah, um, she managed to like get the door open. There was a balcony door that let that you know. Yeah, you could I open remember. Up, and she basically tried to jump somewhere, and she fell, and just smack the the hard like uh like the hard marble or the the tile floor and just From like got the up second and, story yeah and got up and kept going and i said to myself how the hell is she alive how the hell is she okay and lo and behold she's she's perfectly fine just walking around like meow yeah <laughs> She's like, I just wanted to get, I didn't want to climb the stairs, Dad. <laughs> either. One cat named Sabrina took a 32-story express trip to the ground and walked away with only a punctured lung and a chipped tooth. Not Holy to mention she was shit. released and sent home two days later. Being impervious to fall damage is how snow leopards can not only make a living in the Himalayas, but can legit <laughs> fall clear off a cliff and the only injury they take is to their pride. Speaking of plot armor, did you know cats are actually built to predict the weather? You see, cat hair attracts static electricity, so they can pick up on the buildup of electrical charge that often comes before a really bad storm. And wow. the cat's inner ears are sensitive to sudden drops in atmospheric pressure, which announce the arrival of a cloud assault. Technically, so can we. It's why our ears do the most and pop on a plane, but it's just that cat ears are that much more sensitive. And they can even smell rain and lightning coming. It's so OP that sailors used to use cats aboard ships as a four-legged forecast. For forecast. No, yeah, yeah, forecast. <laughs> Apparently, a cat with the zoomies means you could expect strong winds. A cat that sneezed was warning you of heavy rain. And apparently, if one licked their fur against a grain mid sail, then you better make like God's golfing, because it's <coughs> gonna hail. Now, to be fair, months surrounded by nothing but sea and sea men gives you a lot of time to just make stuff up. I mean, just how many sea monster stories was just a whale freeing his willy? But there <laughs> might be some truth to the cat thing. Oh my god. <laughs> I was kind of thinking, I was like, why is he showing whale penai? Because it, Loch Ness Monster. Cats will often spend extra time licking themselves before a bad storm since having damn fur helps with the static thing I told you about. So basically, if cats could talk, we'd see a lot of meteorologists on unemployment. And speaking of no job, cats really managed to finesse their way into living in nearly 50 million homes in America rent-free. And one of the biggest reasons yeah. is because cats are the best manipulators nature has to offer. And if you think they aren't, you're probably a mark and you don't even know it. <laughs> cheese tags <laughs> according to researchers at the university of sussex many cats will exploit their owners with a soliciting purr it's more high frequency triggers a sense of urgency in humans and even someone resembles the cry of an infant and we just have to assume that's intentional and in experiments not only did humans have a faster response time when hearing that purr compared to a normal one it even affected people that never owned cats this distress purr likely triggers a deep innate nurturing response in humans meaning you're literally hardwired to answer to it no matter what you were doing before so apparently cats understand psychology too 
That's not even really a joke because adult cats almost never meow to each other, but kittens do it with their mothers for food and warmth, and we have to assume they just figured <coughs> out it works on humans too. Yeah. It's not just pet cats with this talent. Tigers have been known to imitate the sounds of their prey to lull them into a false sense of security. Tigers have reportedly mimicked sandbar deer and black bears. Bro, just, just listen to this. Are you mooing because you want to be one with the cows? <laughs> I don't think that's how you trick cows into coming over. No. And it's not just tigers. The South American Margay will verbally cosplay as a baby monkey just to murk its parents like a Disney movie. And clearly the manipulation tactics were passed down. In fact, cats are so good at working people that they'd actually be great politicians. Which is probably how Mayor Stubbs of Tolkien, Alaska stayed in office for 20 years, even surviving assassination oh. attempts by dogs, BB guns, and a deep fryer. But there's another special ability <laughs> cats have, and it could arguably be the most overpowered of all. He's attacking Kate under privilege. the blanket. It's how I'm I'm double protected. I'm fine. I'm just playing. Yeah. Look at look at him. He's like he's like oh. he's like wait is this a blanket? I'm gonna get under that. Look at him. I got the pole. I got the pole. <laughs> Like, oh. my paw. Mm -hmm. He's wanting to doing? play. <laughs> He's wanting to play so bad. Look at him. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh no. <laughs> He's a cute murder machine. <laughs> <laughs> like hell wound. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make you dizzy. I'm gonna get it. Ouch. I'm going to my get knuckle. it to me. <laughs> Ow, my knuckle. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> he started to slide backwards. Oh, oh Chevin. Like, oh, Did you see no. his eyes? Yeah. <laughs> oh. He's like, I fucked up. I fucked up. Help me. <laughs> <clears throat> He's a funny dude. You are such a silly boy. Look at you. Let me see. <laughs> City boy. Oh. Yeah, I have all these humans wrapped. <laughs> and there he goes. There he goes. Oh well. Sorry. Dolphins got Flipper, Orcas got Free Willy. Meanwhile, the best ah. deal shark management could get them was being typecast as Jaws. Ah. You see, there's this thing called baby schema. It basically means that humans have an intrinsic bias towards a certain set of facial features in people and animals, to the point where it just makes us large eyes. Pretend. And with their big head, wide <laughs> eyes, and round forehead, cats literally remind us of babies. And even though it's a buff from nature, cats they will 100% play into this by figuring out what combination well, of ear wiggling, baby. whisker pointing, and eye narrowing gets the best response from people. Now, add the fact that slow blinking with your cat can trigger oxytocin in both of you, <laughs> the literal hormone that bonds a mother to her child, and you can see how cats were basically engineered to be irresistible. It's pretty privileged on every steroid possible. And it's wild because if any other animal had a reputation for cold indifference and global genocide, it'd be cause to pause, but because it's cats, we just let it slide. Cat cuteness virtually has a schedule. <laughs> I said virtual for a reason. It's said that 50% of all internet traffic is driven by cat content. That's 50% of all the stuff on the internet. Yeah. I want you to think about that during this ad. Matter of fact, I'm going to you consider the fact Some... that the internet also contains pornographic material. Shut up. Oh my god. Then it is pretty surprising that cats that drastically overwhelm that, you know? Well, in terms of paid content, yeah, like the adult film industry is responsible for a lot of the money that goes through, but cat content online is usually free. So we need to rewrite the uh, song from what was that show called? The Puppets. The Internet is for. Yeah. Yeah. We need to rewrite it to, uh, to be the uh, Internet's for cats. The Internet is for cats. <laughs> the Internet is for cats. Grab your pet and stroke the cat. Cats, cats, cats. It works. Cat related. Oh, you're back. Oh, by the way, was it? Was it cat related? I'm actually curious. But the thing that almost always gets. Uh, oh, yeah, we have YouTube Premium, so we didn't have to see an ad there. Forgotten is that cats give back as much as they take, which leads to their next flex healing powers. 
And not just for them. Science says having a cat living under your roof easily extends your subscription to life. <laughs> Studies show that cat owners are 40% less likely to suffer a heart attack and have a 30% less chance of getting clapped by cardiovascular complications. And since cardiovascular disease is one of the leading causes of preventable death today, so it's very good to know like considering one of, I have high not cholesterol. Not to mention kids that grew up around cats have less of a chance <clears> of getting folded by allergies, especially if the exposure started in early infancy or even while they're still in the womb waiting room. And then there's the fact that just petting a cat can nerf stress so levels and blood pressure. But if you really want to get literal about it, cats purr at a frequency that's said to improve bone density, repair tendons, and promote healing. I never really fully understood it, but apparently cats purr at a frequency that transmits vibrations throughout the body, vibrations that help increase blood flow to the affected area, thereby bringing more nutrients. It's also believed that those same vibrations can help with soft tissue injuries like sprains and strains. I know I said they live rent free, but considering all they do to carry our health, Again, I, I feel like we could let it slide. It's not just a buff to your yeah. health either. I vividly remember seeing a bunch of surveys that said that women on dating sites actually find men with cats more attractive. Something about seeming more nurturing or emotionally intelligent. On an unrelated note, I want y'all to meet my editor and content manager. <laughs> hey. Hey. Say hi, He's so hi. cute. Such a cute hi. kitty. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I tried to find the articles online, but apparently there was a switch up, and now women find cat owners less attractive. So on another unrelated note, yeah, he isn't mine. I'm actually just cat sitting for a friend. Oh, come on oh, now. Good to know. I'm less dateable than somebody who doesn't have a cat. Great. Well, technically, I don't have a cat anymore, so I guess, hey, ladies, I'm on the mark. Oh, I shouldn't joke about that. Shout out to you, Yusuf. Yeah, apparently <coughs> cat claw armor is so strong that it Aww. might just be able to save you from cancer. We've all heard the stories of feline physicians detecting it in people before anyone else could. Cats have a sense of smell about 14 times stronger than humans, with their 200 million odor receptors to our pitiful, almost embarrassing five. Five million. Tumors produce volatile organic compounds, and these VOCs leave the body through sweat and breath. And there's a lot of respected researchers out there that will die on the hill that cats can sniff it out the same way dogs can. In 2018, rescue cat Mia climbed on owner Michelle Pearson's chest and wouldn't get off for anything, sniffing and pawing at, you know, the right one, while also meowing and looking at her, as, as cats do. It wasn't until her husband checked for himself that he felt the telltale lump, and that's how the cat that was rescued from certain death ended up returning the favor and saving her owner from stage 2 breast cancer. Yeah. And there's not even much of a reach considering there's also stories of cats warning their diabetic owners of their potentially fatally low blood sugar. Either that or cats can see the future and they'll choose to keep you in theirs if they like you enough. And even that's low-key valid considering superpower number seven is that cats have ultra instinct. Those whiskers can detect sudden changes in air currents to figure out the size, shape, and speed of nearby objects. It's like a whole radar system growing out of their face, and it's how a blindfolded cat is still hell on earth for any mouse in the area. Bro, I still don't think you're understanding just how much of a cheap whiskers are. Cats can even use their whiskers to figure out what direction their prey is trying to dodge it in right before they pounce, allowing them to cut off any possible escape routes. Now to us, it's interesting and pretty cool, but to a mouse trying to make it home to his family, that's gotta be some bullshit. And cats don't just have them on their face. They have you saw him hiding there, right? Mm -hmm. There he is. <laughs> That's a smart little mouse. To his family. The cat's just like, where you at, you That's little gotta shit? Be some bullshit. And cats don't just have them on their face. They have whiskers all over. And you can't even play dead with the cats since they have carpal whiskers that allow them to tell if their prey is playing or, you know, actually past tense. And honestly, this might be the most broken ability cats have. It's basically impossible yeah. to catch a cat slipping. They don't have to hear you. They don't even Tell have to smell story. you. All it takes is a smallest change in air currents to dry snitch on you. But as predators, cats are the ones that do the sneaking, which only makes their next ability even more of a jihad for their prey. Superpower number eight. Cats are athletic freaks of nature. <laughs> no, seriously, yes. cats are the most athletic group of animals on earth, and I'm a stand on that. There might not be a single event at the, the Olympics that one yes. of the 40 flavors of feline Look can flex that. on us in. You want speed? Cheetahs can go zero to 60 in three seconds and can peak out at over 70 miles per hour. A cheetah on a Sunday morning jog can still get pulled over on the turnpike. Ain't that crazy? Want to see some long jumping? Cougars can clear 45 feet horizontally on an off day. You want to see a cat get high minus the catnip? The serval jumps so high that their meal prep literally involves pimp slapping birds right out of the air. And for powerlifting, yep. here we have a literal deadlift by a leopard using only its teeth. A baby yeah. rhino. That is a rhino. Yes, that is a giraffe. And speaking of leopards, there are also gymnasts on steroids that turn trees into jungle gyms. Jesus. And if you think you're safe from the smoke and water, keep in mind that the caiman is part of one of the most successful group of predators in history. And all it took was an aquatic equalizer in the form of a cat to wreck their entire game plan. Not to mention jaguars have been seen swimming clear across the Panama Canal. Yeah, yes. that one. Also, they have a hydraulic press for a jaw. God help you if you get caught in it. 
And all I need to say about Tigers is that this is an Indian Gar, and even this walking Red Bull logo can get choked out by a 500 pound striped Giggle Garfield. Yeah, it, look right, at that, this, look at that mother. That is a unit. <laughs> an absolute <laughs> unit. <Yeah. clears throat> Brahma Bull, eat your heart out, brother. Jesus Christ, that's enough beef to feed a fucking football team. Walking Red Bull logo can get choked out by a 500 pound striped Giggle Garfield. And I don't even need to say anything about lions. Those triceps speak for themselves. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I, I was going to say, uh, some animals, it terrifies me just how strong they are. For me, the one that terrifies me the most is if a, is if a, a like Kodiak grizzly bear got its got its hands on me, because Kodiak grizzly bear can grow up to be at least like nine like nine to ten feet tall, and weigh in excess of like five to six hundred pounds, and you, you see, here's the thing like they've actually like done simulations on who would win in a fight. You know, like a gorilla. They did like gorilla versus grizzly bear, leopard versus grizzly bear. Um, you know lion, tiger, all of these different animals versus a grizzly bear, the bear always wins. Simply because of sheer size and strength alone. <laughs> and bite force is one thing. You see, the cats, like the big cats, like the leopard, definitely has like the bite force advantage. But the bear, because its fur is so thick, even around its neck, yeah. that literally... <laughs> They can reach up the with their one armor. Yeah, they can literally reach up with the one paw, grab you and hold you close, and then literally like paw, like claw you like to death with its other one. Meanwhile, it's gonna like try and claw at you to like tear through your skin. Uh, but with a bear, ain't no getting through that. But like with a conventional, with like a conventional like like tiger claw or lion or leopard, and yeah. They've shown, like, the super predators, like, uh, out of, like, all the super predators in nature, the bear is up there with, like, the most terrifying hmm. in terms... And, and what sets it apart is that these are carnivores. Bears are omnivores, meaning that they they don't just go... F they don't go for the kill immediately. Like, cats, like, big cats like this do. They kill you immediately, that way you don't feel anything. A bear gets a hold of you, it's holding you down, and it's literally ripping you, parts of you away Slowly while you're still eating. alive. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn. Cats are nature's population control, and there isn't anywhere on Earth outside of the Devil's Iceberg that doesn't have oh, some kind of cat there. <laughs> Even the travel size ones are amazing. Oh my yes. goodness. The deadliest cat in the world is the African black-footed cat. But because it's so of their metabolism, cute. not only can yeah. they catch up to 15 bodies a night, they also have a hunting success rate of 60%. Not even lions, tigers, and leopards can touch that. There's a reason why domestic cats put billions of animals on shirts a year. And sometimes they turn entire species into history lessons. And unlike their wild cousins, a lot of times with domestic cats, they do it just for fun. Yeah, you think it's cute, but it's bloodlust. And if you're a mouse and op with whiskers, it's like Thanos. <laughs> they do be inevitable. Especially when you factor superpower <coughs> number nine. Not in Cats this house. can teleport. I'm dead serious. Cats do this thing where they just spawn wherever the plot needs them the most. <laughs> Unlike the solitary hunters, cats can cover insane amounts of distance in times that really make no sense. Take mountain lions, for example. Young male cougars will often travel hundreds of miles away from their mother's territory to find their own. In 2009, a tagged cougar took a walk that took him from Black Hills, South Dakota, all the way to Greenwich, Connecticut. Basically, he hiked from Mount Rushmore to 30 miles from Manhattan. And it's not just cougars that go cross country. Yeah. A tiger named T1 managed to walk 800 miles across India in only a few months, fueled by nothing but the power of horny. And of course, there's a story of El Jefe, a jaguar that randomly showed up in Arizona just outside Tucson. I could really keep going. From June 2017 to July 2018, a young lynx trekked from a wildlife refuge in Alaska all the way into the heart of the Yukon. A trip that totaled 2,174 miles. His name was Hobo, by the way. Can't even make Hobo. that up. But the best story of teleporting cats was Clementine Jones. She was a cat in New York whose family left her behind because they were moving and they figured the trip would be too hard on a pregnant cat. Oh, little did they know. Clementine spent a couple of months with her kittens and then one day just headed out and popped up at her old family's home 1,600 miles away in Denver. Yeah. Uh, there, was actually, uh, there was actually a movie that paid tribute to that. Uh, uh, Llewellyn Davis, I think is what it was. And basically, 
this guy was tasked with looking after this cat from his friends. He was allowed to stay in their apartment for the next amount of time as long as he looked after their cat. So, he got an offer to do a show because he was a folk musician and he, he needed the money. So, he was like, okay, where's the show? They're like, oh, it's in Minnesota. Fuck, we're in New York. Like, what do I do? I can't just leave the cat here. And it was just like, tell you what, man, bring the cat with us. And he did. He brought the cat with him. And in the middle of their trip, something happened, and the cat got loose and just ran off. And he cut, and he's so worried because the person, like the cat, belonged to an old girlfriend of his. Like he was still sweet on her and everything. She'd moved on and she was with another guy. But he was still sweet on her. You know, he didn't want to make her mad or anything like that because he, you know, he still cared about her. He is morbid the whole way back, trying to figure out what do I, what am I going to tell them about this cat? What am I going to do? He comes back, and they are literally in there, and he walks in, and there's the cat. <laughs> there's the cat just like sitting there, just sitting there, just like minding his own business. Like what Meow. took you so long? <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, it's just stuff like that. I, I'm just... When you, the, the, when you see real-life stuff like this, yeah, it it's crazy. Also, someone... I forget who it was. It was a podcast. He shared a story of when he was, like, three years old, the cat that they had ran away. Mm -hmm. And then, ten years later, like, literally, like, ten years later, the cat came back. Hmm. And was like, and like showed up and like, Mittens? Holy crap, Mittens, I haven't seen you in so long. Buddy, look at you. And then the next day the cat died. Yeah, yeah when I was really young, uh, we had a cat that apparently my mom didn't realize had gotten up onto the uh, undercarriage of the car. And so she rode to the mall with us. And then when we came back out from the mall, we heard meowing and realized our cat was under our car. Holy crap. And we got her temporarily and mom tried to hand her to me and I was going to hold her while she closed the door and before mom could get the car door closed she like freaking pushed out and leaped out of my hands back out and ran away again and my mom was frustrated and gave up and wouldn't try to get her anymore so she got left at the mall and she never did come back to our house Aww. Mm -hmm. fucking sucked sorry dude but the fat one has gotten out one time and disappeared for her like basically half a day and then he finally came back that was scary yeah it was so i remember we chased after him mm -hmm. yeah we're talking it's about he you. was chasing another cat it was on a porch <coughs> he came back covered every in time i would cobwebs. get anywhere close to getting a hold of him the other cat would get spooked by me and run further away and he would chase the other cat further away and we got to the point where they were going onto our neighbor's property and i just kind of had to like let them go and just be like he better come back and he finally did. And Thank goodness. Yeah, that was like the Family got tricked by a dupe. Clementine was born with an extra toe and had a burn mark on her shoulder. There was no mistaking her. There's only one cat power that's arguably more impressive, and you saw it coming as soon as you clicked on his video. Superpower number 10, mind control. Yes. It's all because of a little <laughs> parasite called, you know the name, Toxoplasma Gandhi. It all starts when this parasite enters a cat because they literally only reproduce in their bowels and their eggs don't get past until the cat has a movement, usually in a litter box. Now here's the problem. The Toxoplasma Gandhi needs to find a way back into the cat in order to hit restart on its life cycle. And the best way to do that is by setting up shop inside one of the animals on its grocery list. The only issue is no mouse that values its life is going anywhere near a death sentence with toe beans to make it happen. So the parasite, which by the way basically uses the mouse as a layover, they begin to rewire its brain in order to remove the fear of cats. And I don't even know how, but infected mice can even start feeding for cat pee. With more irrational confidence than a father of four in an Instagram model's comments, it's easier for the mouse to get body bagged by its number one op, thus repeating this vicious mouse murking cycle. And of course, we now believe that when this same parasite invades it's us, they creepy. do the same thing they would to a mouse. Which is why popular opinion is that the Toxoplasma parasite causes an unreasonable attraction to cats. And it's possible that this factory reset of our personality is due to the parasite making enzymes that control dopamine. And it's not just humans that can get infected. It turns out afflicted hyena cubs end up bolder in the face of lions, which is a great way for them to get invited to a meet and greet with Mufasa. Oh. It's not 100% proven that the parasite's responsible for all the cat people in the world. Was it the cat island in, t in Japan? It looks like it. Oh. 
There's proof that this parasite was present in ancient Egyptian mummies. And these were the people that straight up worshipped them. Not to mention up to a third of all people alive right now have it and most have no idea. And that's why I say cats have the wildest plot armor I've ever seen. Cause real talk, only cats could spin a parasitic infection into a way of living for free. Trust me, I would know. Isn't that right, Maple? And that's why cats are the most broken animals in nature. With, with cats being nature's cutest form of population control. <laughs> I talk about them a lot in my book. Hold on. Sorry, girl. Okay. With cats being nature's cutest form of population control, I talk about them a lot in my book, 100 Animals That Can Redacted Kill You. Link in the description if you want to see for yourself. But make sure you drink water, hug your mother, hug a cat. It might just save your life. And if he allows it, I'm going to see y'all. In the next one. Aw, <laughs> you're such a good boy. You're such a, you're such a good boy. Okay, okay. You I'm going to give you the hug. Oh, there you go. <sighs> I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good key. <clears throat> so yeah, some pretty insane plot armor. I mean, all things considered, it's... I, I'm convinced our cats, like our like the cats that y'all got, are, have plot armor to a certain extent. Carpies, definitely. Well, I, I guess Vega's top. As far as plot armor goes, probably. I mean, but I mean, Calliope literally meows, and I have to. I wake up, and I have to lift the covers up. And then she sits right here, and I'm like, just get under the cover. <laughs> like, how long does it take you to get under the cover? Too long. And then she'll swat at me, and I'm like, what do you want? You see, Lulu used to play that game with me. Like, she would, like, she would, like, sit next to me, and she'd, like, 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 push on my arm like she wanted under the covers. I'd lift the covers up. She wouldn't go under. I put the covers back down. Well, eventually, I just take her. That's what I did. And I, I just put her under there, and then she's like, wow. Yeah, exactly. Wow, wow. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, just be quiet. <laughs> exactly. I would pick up Lulu. I'd be like, all right, Lulu, here. And I put her <laughs> under there, and she's like, she's like, no. Yeah, like, and then, and then that I'll, is what you wanted. What do <laughs> you want from me? And like, and, and like, she'll like rustle around a little bit, like she w doesn't want to be there. And mm -hmm. then eventually, she's like, she's like, rustle, rustle. Ah, fuck it, this is where I want to be. And she's like, plop. And she just plops her ass down, like right behind my knees. And uh, and oh god, and, and it was Kaipi like. Kaipi literally lays in the bed, and she's like this. Oh. Uh... And so I have, you know, legs across the bed on this side, and then I got Kaipi. And she's got her legs stuck out, so I'm just like, okay, I guess I'll just not sleep. Sleep in a croissant chain. Lu Lulu, Lulu, she always would like keep herself like very tightly wound up. Well, uh, Clive starts out that way, and then well, <laughs> she's the, just like, oh, this the worst, is my bed. The worst that I've got from Lulu was that she would like wake up in the middle of the night, and she'd like wrap her like wrap her like paws around my ankle and I'd just be like I'd be like Lulu what are you doing and then she would like wriggle her way like up to where my head is and I'd like open it up real quick and then she'd peek her head out and go meow <laughs> and I'm like I'm like you gotta go to the bathroom I'd open it up she'd go in there she goes to the litter box she'd like okay there we go then she hopped back up in the bed with me and then she'd lay back down like same same exact spot and I wouldn't have to force her to go under the blanket. All I would do is just lift the blanket up. She'd just go right in. God. His thing that he does now, the most annoying thing, is <coughs> around 20 to 30 minutes before it's time for me to wake up and feed him his breakfast, uh -huh. he'll hop up on my bed and I'll be asleep. Like, And he'll take his front paw pad and he'll go. And I'll be like, quit. <laughs> you know. Stop! <laughs> like, <laughs> you little shit. He fucking touches my lips with his paw pad. And I'm like, dude, you step in a litter box. That's, That's unsanitary. Gross. Stop touching my <laughs> lips with your feet. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? Lula never did that, but every now and again, like, I would get this. I'd get the, you know, like, her, like, smushing on my, my face. I have a scratch on my forehead from Calliope. 
Oh, uh, yeah? Like, she decided that she was going to parkour off my face. Ooh. I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah, Lulu uh, got me good one time whenever I was, like, trying to put her down. And she, like, rolled over real quickly and dug her claw in and her claw just went... Mm. I was like, ah! Yeah. And then she was like, she's like... I was, I was like, I was like, it's okay, it's okay. I pulled her claw out and I sat her back down and I looked and it was like blood drips started like coming out from like four different places. I'm like, oh! I go in there and wash it with peroxide, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and I'm just like, oh god, that sucked, that sucked, that sucked. Yeah. Oh. Also, his new thing is when I'm playing video games, since I finally apparently taught him for the most part not to touch the keyboard, he'll sit next to me like just right beside my old shoulder like this and then he'll just sit there and go <laughs> and when I finally look over at him he'll go Aww. Aww. it's actually really cute <coughs> he'll do he it several times he'll be like hello don't forget I'm here he just wants to love it so dude. where's Come on. my food Come human on. human wear food give food now well, it used to be that he could pester you enough to where you'd give in. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And so, I think you've almost got it to where he's broken out of that habit. He still begs when he's not supposed to be having anything. Hmm. He usually starts asking for supper about two and a half hours early nowadays. Even though he never gets it early. Because he's like... That other door's not open. I can't go sneak food anymore. <laughs> the earliest I'll give him supper is uh, 15 to 20 minutes before the alarm goes off ever. Yeah. But he'll still start asking like two and a half hours early. Well. And I usually only give it to him early if I've gone out to smoke like at 1.30ish or something. The alarm's about to go off before I sit back down. I'm like, well, I may as well go ahead and fix it for him or I'll have to get back up in like five minutes. Happy day. This one has the cutest meow, but he never really meows unless you're offering him something. <coughs> That's I true. I meow at mom all the time. Meow. 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 Oh, he just wants <laughs> loving right now. It's hard to get uh, him to talk. Yeah. Well, speaking of love, I hope y'all will show us some love by hitting that subscribe button down there and also maybe leaving a like. We'd greatly appreciate it. If you want to check out more from Casual Geographic, click his name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Nice beautiful. boy. Yeah. That was Vega. Yeah, he's over there on the bed. We'll see y'all later, everybody. Bye-bye.